Hey guys, uh, welcome to my channel today. Uh, today I'm going to be touching on the topic uh, that is going to be the whole Visa Bay situation. Um, a lot of people have been sharing their opinion on it and I thought that I would give my own two cents about the entire matter. Um, this video is not going to be bashing uh, Ritendo or any like in any fashion. Coming from another country as well, I understand the struggles and strifes that are related with migration and immigration. And uh, I, when I watched the video, I sympathized and empathized with her. Um, on several levels, I sympathized with her based on, you know, like timing constraint, you know, that to me was my biggest concern in the entire matter. How timing just kind of just made everything worse, in my opinion. And I'm definitely going to touch, touch on that. And also advice, like... I was very, I was very concerned about if she was getting any advice at all and who was giving her the advice that, you know, she was getting. That's if she's getting any advice. So, yeah, let's get into it. So, the entire situation to me just baffles me with time because I don't understand how one waits a month before one is to leave a country, you know, once a uh, expiration you know, in order for them to be in the country, gets expired before they decide to reapply. Like, I don't know how, even not even decide to reapply, but before then they realize that they don't have the money to be able to reapply, to be able to stay in the country that they are. And this is, you know, this is a country that she's known her whole life. You know, she's, not, she's known England more than she's known Zimbabwe. So, um, to me, it's just a bit baffling because white people, you know, uh, these people in these Western countries, they stay waiting for black people. They stay waiting for immigrants of any sort to make the slightest mistake. And then they just send you out of their country, right? And then they do it in the most vile, the most disgusting way with the most disgusting words. So you have to be very careful when it comes to immigration. Like, to me, how do you wait that long to be able to address a situation like this? To me, is baffling. That's why I think that there's a lot of information that we're not privy to because I refuse to think that she waited this long, you know, like she waited this long to realize that, oh, I don't have the money. So I think that there's information that we, we don't know because we just don't know about. Because, and also the thing about advice is, who is she getting advice from? Who is giving her advice? Like, is it a situation that she's been, she, you know, she's been probably talking with family members and friends and they've told her that, oh, uh, wait a bit, wait, don't do this, don't do that. She also touched on the fact that she was looking for, you know, she's been looking for jobs and traditional jobs have not really worked well with her and everything else like that. Um, you know, she's not gotten, you know, like the commission job was obviously that, that's going to take a while before money starts kicking in, you know, and you have to be really good at, you know, customer service to be able to like make the real kind of money that commission jobs require or can give you. So I, like I said, I sympathized with her a lot on her plight. And you could tell that when she was really asking for the money uh, through Go GoFundMe, she was like desperate. She truly felt in her heart of hearts that she did not, there was nothing else she could do. There was nothing else she could do. She had tried. She was at ends with, there was nothing else she could do. Seriously. She had done everything that she could do. And at this point it was just like, guys, can you help me? And if I was, if she had called me and asked me for advice, I would have told her, right? Like as a social media influencer, there are ways that you can make money, but hopefully she would have called me way in advance. It would have not just been a situation where she calls me in a month, like, Hey, how, yeah, Hey, how can I make money? Like in a month, like, you know, that's, it's a bit rich for you to start running now left and right up and center now to begin to get money, you know, in a month, the, the best thing that you can do in a situation like that, it will be a go for me. But that's the, that's why I say that I had a problem with the timing time management and uh you know the time time management for me was like the main thing because had she started considering this a year in advance because when you're supposed to especially a situation that has to deal with immigration like this you have to think about it well in advance well in advance because certain things take longer times you send certain information and it takes a long time for them to be able to process it and so you have to think about this way in advance a year a year and a half in advance at least nine months in advance so as she called me nine months in advance and asked me for how can i raise money i would have told her all these things that companies are selling sending to you for free all these clothes all these bags or whatever what you can do is you can take 10 pounds go to laundromat 
wash all these things, fold them, and then sell it. Create a new Instagram page, you know, you already have pictures that you're wearing most of these things anyway, so that's fine. Just copy those same pictures there and sell it. Let people pay you through PayPal. It's, it, it's not even that big of a deal. It's not even that much of a deal. The only problem where you're going to have like a long, you know, like a, 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 a lot of things is probably the washing, the drying, the folding, and also packaging and sending it to people. That's it. At least from there already, you can raise a portion of the money. I would have told her. And then, also, if people are sending you products, the companies are sending you products for you to, I don't know, advertise for them and everything else like that, hopefully you're charging them. Gone are those days, you know, that was 10 years ago on YouTube where companies would just send you hair and expect for you to give them a five-star review, expect for you to make a wig, and then that was it. Nowadays, if companies send stuff to you, People, most YouTubers, most influencers with a good, like, with a great base, with an established base, they, 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 they charge these companies. It is not enough that you send me your product that I have to work on to make, to turn into magic. You also have to pay me a percentage of this. We have to agree upon an amount. So I would, I would tell, I would advise her, hopefully this is happening, this, you're charging them. And if you're already charging them, let's look for a way where, a, a, you know, a way, you know, a percentage, uh, a good, you know, like, um, a base where you are getting, you know, you're getting what you're supposed to get and the company is getting what they're supposed to get because if you're already charging them, that means that the prices that you're charging them are not sound prices. How is it that you're still, you're still, you're struggling? That doesn't mean that it's, it's, it, it cannot be sound because there are people that have way less than her platform, right? That have way less uh, followers or, or subscribers than her own platform that are living off well as being social media influencers, as being a self-employed uh, social media um, person personalities. So why is it that her own case is different? Also, I would have also advised that if selling does not work, you know, it does not bring, you know, a good portion of the money, if upping up your, you know, your base for, you know, your, your pay base for these companies does not um, bring you the, the great kind of money that you need to be able to process this thing. Another thing that you can do is that you can reach out to other social media influencers too, right? Reach out to them and ask them how, if there's any extra way that they, they make their money, right? Ask them for advice for them too because they too are the people that are in this business and they also know. Ask them if there's like a base, you know, there's a base salary that, you know, maybe you, you're not privy to that information so you don't know that information. Maybe there's something that you don't know because they're eating and apparently you cannot eat. So there is a, a disconnect in the kind of information that you are getting. Another thing I would have told her is that uh, if all of these things does not work, then maybe you should find a little part-time job. Even if it's to wait tables during the weekends or uh, you can also do the three of them at the same time or get a, a customer service job that you can be doing. Even if it's the weekend, you can work for suffragists. I know that those jobs, they're not the best kind of jobs, but if you need money right now, right now, you will do all it takes to get the money. So get all these little things together, make this little money that you can make together. And then even if it's just a portion of the money, you can come and tell people that I've raised this. Can you please help me up with this? Or you can see if you can start borrowing now from family members and friends, the little money that you don't have from family members and friends that you probably be able to pay either with interest or without interest. So for me, I was like, she didn't think about the time thing. It's either she didn't think about it or she had money saved up somewhere. And there was a situation where she had to dip into that fund for her, that was made for her immigration purposes she had to dip into that fund it's it's either but i don't know that she she hasn't said anything or i haven't heard her say anything like that in in that in in, in which regard out the only at this point i would have told her like if you had money saved up somewhere and you had to use that money because something crucial was happening uh then you know go for me is the way to go because you have one month it's one month now there's nothing there's re there are f uh, only a few things that you can do in one month to be able to get money but i still feel like there's some of these things that i just listed she can still do them in that one month to at least raise a portion of that money you know and then people like people like a good story we like a good like a a, a grass to graze kind of story we all do you know so i would have told her like a, you know six maybe six months down the line after you you're settled your immigration issues you can start writing a book Write a book about your experience. Write a book about, you know, maybe how you came into the country. Uh, write a book about, you know, your, your life through, your struggles with immigration. How you realized that you had, like, maybe, like, six, nine months before your immigration uh, status was due uh, to change. And, you know, you had to do all these little menial jobs. You had to look for money here and there. You had to struggle. You know, write a book about that, you know, that's state. Because we already there. Some of us already know. But that really details the life of a social media influencer about how it's not all just, you know, gravy, you know, how it's not all just smooth, you know, or bed of roses, you know, that sometimes you ruffle in the thorns as, in the thorns as well. So 
I mean, and gone are those days where, you know, one will be running after a publisher. Nowadays, you can write a book and you can put it on a Amazon, on ebook, right? And you never know. Maybe that is the, maybe that's the, um, the come up that you've been looking for. Maybe that's the, the pathway to your success that you've been looking for. Maybe the proceeds from that book sale now will be able to give you, you know, the calling, you know, the, the, the stepping stone, sorry, that you've been waiting for. You, we never know. But I would have told her that. I would have like, after all those struggles, girl, go ahead and write a book about it. And then you will see, you know, and then give it a fly topic, give it a fly title, and then look, just watch it. Watch it happen. Because people like a good story. People like something that is relatable, something that they can, they can relate to, especially this generation of right nowadays. That would have been it for me. But again, it's the timing situation that really bothers me. I just don't know how one waits that long before one realizes that their status is due. Like, I really don't know. That's why I, I believe in my heart of hearts. I'm repeating this as many times as I can. But I'm, I believe in my heart of hearts that it, it, it must it must have been something that, you know, went left last minute. Last minute, it just went left. Because I, I just, I don't know how one waits that long before they realize that, I don't know, she forgot. She probably did not really check her, her status and then last minute looked at it and was like, oh, I have a, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I missed that part. Maybe she shed some light on that part and I missed it. I don't know. And also she's, you know, those people that are talking about, oh, she should have saved. She's been on YouTube for a while. Girl, she started YouTube when she was, what, a teenager? 18? Now, some people at 18 have already started, they know already about, like, savings. They know already about, like, 401ks and all these things, you know, about how you, you, you know, how you, um, how you manage your bank account and everything else. But some of us, no. We had to fall down a couple of times on our faces, you know, to be able to understand how money works. So, um, I believe that, Ritendo is in that stage right now where she's really learning about the importance of money and the importance of saving. And hopefully from this experience, she can learn about like time management and how to like manage her time well, how to just be aware of everything that's about to happen, you know, in her life. And she can also be aware of, you know, how to make money. Like it's so important, especially as a social media influencer. There is no way, there is no reason why you should be out here not, not being able to make money. Especially as a social media influencer that has a platform as such as hers, you know, it's different if you're just starting out. It's another thing if you've already been in the game for a while. So that to me perplexes me. It perplexes me that she's been in this lifestyle for a long time and yet she cannot make money off it. Like even in a short period of time, she cannot make a portion of the money. That's just, that was just my, the, the, the thing that kind of robbed me off about this, um, the whole situation. But yeah, you guys let me know. What you what you guys think? Do you guys agree with me? Do you disagree with me? Uh, let's talk down in the comment section. If you have a different opinion, go ahead and air it out as you already you guys would. Um, yeah, let's have this conversation going on because the thing though is that this has opened up a bigger conversation than just like return to herself. You know, it's opened up a bigger conversation to like immigration issues, um, the importance of saving as well. You know, and also like how social media influencers can make money. It's opened up a whole can, you know, like a whole Pandora's box now is open. So um, this conversation is just going to go on and on and on and on. And that's nice. You know, we're, we're all supposed to participate in the conversation. So um, let's talk down below. Okay. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.